This is a Casio FX502P and uh, if you wanted to save programs on it back in the day you'd need one of these which is an FA1 adapter you slide the calculator in like that and that gives you two connectors that you can plug into a cassette recorder now that's a bit bulky and cassette recorders are pretty difficult to find in a working state at the moment I don't actually have one not one that I can easily attach this to anyway so a while back I I made this which is a um, Arduino Due with a uh, shield on top and the key bit is the SD card so you can plug this into here and here and then that gives you the option of operating the display and doing various things so you can save a program or data from the calculator it gets transformed from well it gets transformed from the data going through the interface in the FA1 to a sort of Kansas City 2400 Hz signal on these cables one going that way, one going that way and um, in here the DUA and some circuitry decodes that signal and the data is then written onto the SD card and um, you can then get files in and out of the uh, 502P now that's, that's fine but uh, this makes it even more bulky you've got the FA1 cables and um, all the bulk of this together you need a power supply obviously for the Arduino and um, it just becomes a bit cumbersome so I thought well I've got this which is the um, gadget that I made up for the Sharp PCG850 you plug it in there on a the standard Sharp 11 pin connector and it's got a, a blue pill display and the same card reader and some buttons so I thought well what I could do is take that out of that get rid of the FA1 don't need that you've got the calculator then you can plug into the connector on the calculator directly that gets rid of the FA1 you can then plug the gadget in here at the other end of the cable so now the blue pill will be decoding the signals that are coming over the interface rather than decoding the cassette type analog signals that are coming out of the FA1 now this doesn't look a lot smaller but you've got the option of shrinking this down and having a PCB that plugs straight into the calculator up here and this is just a prototype to see whether the hardware works and more importantly whether I can decode this protocol here so turns out that um, yes you can you can decode this protocol so I'll set this up in a working sort of configuration and um, go through what you can do with it okay so I've got the 502 and the gadget here and I'm going to go through what I've got so far in the prototype code. The important thing here was to get the interface between the calculator and the processor I'm using here which is an STM32 on a blue pill. Once I've got that code working then all the rest of the functionality is really stuff that can be changed quite easily by reflashing the processor. But if I couldn't get that protocol working then the whole project is just a waste of time really because there's no way of talking to the calculator. So there is information on the web about the 602 and the 700 um, and the protocol that's used with those calculators and the FA1 and FA2 and, to, and the FP10 which is the printer that you can plug into this. But there's, there's not a lot of detailed information on the 502 so I had to reverse engineer some of the protocol and it is slightly different to the 602. It's, it's pretty similar but slightly different so I've had to do things to get this working and it was not easy it's a it's a strange protocol um, it's a serial one-wire bi-directional data bus protocol with variable B 
bit length packets and all sorts of weird stuff. It's, it's not very consistent in the way that it uses commands and so on. But anyway, so I did get it working, so I, I do have it working. So what I'm going to do is just a demo of the things that work at the moment. Some things aren't finished, but I mean it does do enough to show that it does work. So if I get the 502, and um, messages will appear here on the OLED display. They're sort of debug messages at the moment. You don't need an OLED display or the buttons. They're not used at all by this code to operate this. The idea would be that you do everything from the calculator. So if I save, let's let's save the X display. So one, two, three, four, five, six. Inverse save, inverse EXE. That's now done. It's that quick. Because we're not using the same number of wait commands, we don't have to wait for the tape, and this interface is a lot faster. Everything runs much faster than with the FA1 and a cassette player. So it's written that X register to file m000.dat. So there's two types of file. There's memories and there's program files. So this is a memory file, m, and a program file would be p, followed by the number. And the number is the file number that you type in after the save or load command. So that's now gone to the file m000.dat, but it's also still stored in the buffer in the RAM, and that buffer in the RAM of the STM32 is where the data comes from when you send it to the calculator. It doesn't come directly from the SD card, it has to come from that buffer. It's faster, that's a short reason. And um, so that is still in the RAM buffer. It's still on the file and we can read it in, but it's it's on on the STM32 in the RAM buffer. So if I clear the X display, so that 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6 is gone there, I can then do an inverse load, inverse EXE, and that will then go to the RAM buffer, read it back, to it, back in, and there's the 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. You can also, if you want to, save all the memories. So if I clear the memories with an inverse MAC, and we put 1, 1, 1 in memory 1, 2, 2, 2, 2, in two so recall ones ones recall twos twos I can then save and let's use a file number of 400 so 400 is the number that will go into the file name and we do that you'll see that it'll trundle around in m400 is the file m400.dat is where it's written that data so if I clear the memories now the memories are gone memory recall one nothing memory recall two nothing and if I do an inverse load and I'll ask for file 400. This will come from the RAM buffer. And boom, F400. So it's, it's found the file and it's acknowledging that 400 is being loaded. If we then read memory 1, we've got 1s in it. Memory 2, we've got 2s in it. So you could save a different file and, and so on. Let's move on to the program. So it's blank at the moment, no programs. Let's write a quick in P0. Let's uh, write a program, label 0, go to 0, so that just tells us it's P0. Let's get rid of that. Right, so there's two steps, label 0, go to 0. If you go to mode 3, you can then save that. And let's save it, let's overwrite the, well let's know, let's save it to 400. So 400 has got P0 in it, and we'll save that. So this is going to write... 274 bytes, it saves the entire memory every time, and it's gone to file p 400dat so p is for programs. So mode 2, there it is, mode 3, inverse MAC, clear it, back to mode 2, it's gone. So if we, let's, let's put program in P1, label 1, go to 1, go to mode 3, save that in program 401. So that's going to send the data. There we go, 401, 274 bytes written into p 401dat Mode 2, there it is. Back to mode 3. Right, clear it. So all the programs have gone there. So if I want to load it back in, back into mode 3, inverse load, and then exit. And that will load from RAM the last file I wrote, which will be P401. So in mode 2, P1 is there, and it's got label 1, go to 1, so that's fair enough. Let's go and wipe all the programs out again, so no programs, back to P2, blank. So now I want to load 
P400 dot that. Now that's not in the RAM buffer, so I need a way of saying to the blue pill, I want you to load P400 dot that into your RAM buffer so that I can load it into the calculator later. And because of the way cassette tapes work, there's no way of telling it that. But I've sort of put some snooping code in. So when you save the X register in mode one, if you save a particular set of values, so we want P400, so it'll be 4.00 times 10 to the 47. If I save that value with inverse save inverse XE, it will save it to M000, but then it will read P400 dot dat. It will read program file 400 dot dat. Now the, the prefix part of the code, memory or program, I haven't done yet. I need to add a little bit of code. So if it's times 10 to the 47, it'll be a program. And if it's times 10 to the 48, it'll be a memory file. So at the moment, you can only specify program files, but that's just that's just code. So now it's loaded P400 dot dat into the RAM buffer. So if I go to mode 3, well, let's check it's empty, it's empty, let's go to mode 3, and I do an inverse load. Now I could specify 400, let's do that, or I could just leave it at 0 and it will load whatever file is in there. Now it'll check for 400 before it actually loads. It's now coming out of the RAM buffer, and it's done it, and in mode 2, there you go, it's P0, not P1, and P0, if we go into P0, is the label zero, go to zero. So that is the data that was in file p400 dot dat. If I want p401, which will be p1, let's do that. Let's go to mode three, clear everything, back to one. I want 4.01 times 10 to the 47, save that, inverse save, inverse exe. It's overwritten m000 dot dat, but that's not too much of a problem. You can always save all the memories and it's just as quick as it is saving just the X register really compared to cassette that is a lot faster. So now we've loaded P401. If we go back to mode 3, do an inverse load, XE, it'll pull that data over, back to mode 2, and it's P1. And P1 has, boom, there you go, label 1, go to 1. So that's it. So you can save and load memories, save and load the X register, save and load programs. At the moment it's only programs you can specify which one you want loaded off the SD card, but that's that's really trivial. So the next step, I think, is to um, look at shrinking all this down and throwing away bits I don't want and putting it in the form factor of a small board that plugs directly into the uh, connector instead of having a cable which means it would sit up here. I think it's going to have to be USB powered because I think the OLED display is quite nice. You don't need it, but you also need 5 volts for these modules. And I quite like using these modules because if it breaks, the connectors go or something, then you can just snip it off and put a new one on. You don't wreck the board trying to fiddle around with all these weird connector type soldering issues. So, for a similar reason, I put little modules on for these USB connectors, and you can just snip the module off, destroy that PCB, and put a new one on. Um, obviously, with the blue pill, you're stuck with what you've got, but the blue pill's a bit too big, I think, to, to fit along the top. Although, actually, looking at it, I've got another one here. It is. You could do it with a blue pill. That would be an option. But I think I'd probably solder... Um, the SDM32 directly on the card because I do want more flash and more RAM in here. It would be nice having more storage so that you could store more programs in the memory of the STM32 um, and then you could actually run a menu system. That would be quite nice. So I suppose then you'd need buttons, but anyway. So I was thinking of also putting some expansion connectors because there's no way uh, no reason why you couldn't put snooping code in a bit like the snooping that reads files to do other things so you could put code in that looks at either programs or data and does things like um, send things to i squared c buses or or whatever so i'll probably put some i mean it's just a connector to the gpios on the stm32 really and what you do with them is is up to you I was also thinking of putting a real-time clock on there because there's nothing 
it would stop snooping software working in the other direction and collecting the real-time clock information and then overwriting some memories in a memory file that you read through, perhaps on a particular file number. So if you read file number, I don't know, 999, then you get the time in a particular memory in some coded format. So that would be fairly easy, and that would be quite useful. I don't think you can have an alarm that wakes up the 502 without running a wire through. You can't do that on the interface. But you could do it with a wire, so that would be... Well, I don't know, do I want to solder wires onto a 502? Maybe, maybe not. So I might have the option to do that. But again, it's just a GPIO, it's just not very neat and tidy. So I suppose some buttons would be an idea as well, in case you wanted to run a menu on the uh, on the board. Um, I, one problem with this is that I don't think there's a way of loading programs from a program, sort of chaining program so you are stuck with 255 steps you can't actually have more steps than that you can't load code under the control of code I don't think I don't think they provided that in the 502 so that's a bit of a limitation so nah, it does I mean it's not really too much of a problem um, the other thing you could do is you could maybe do away with the SD card and store programs directly in the flash. So you could have a library of code in the um, program on a larger STM32. This one hasn't got enough flash to do that. Which means you could you could load some programs from the built-in flash or the sketch that's on here. It's running the Arduino framework rather than the SD card. But the SD card is nice because you can take that out and put it in a computer. And so you can load and save stuff from a computer easily. Um, doing that with the the Arduino sketch means you'd be fiddling with the sketch itself and recompiling it and you'd need a programmer attached and all that sort of thing rather than just an SD card. But uh, yeah, I think the fact that the protocol works, I mean that means it's worth going ahead with a, a smaller cut down shrunken version of the, um, of the gadget I think. But yeah, there you go, it, uh, it works. <laughs>